How's it going? <laughs> um, yeah, you can sit, sit whatever you want. I made Justin come over here to kind of hold my hand through this because I'm, I'm not really a. I I can talk to people when I'm on stage pretty well and like one on one, but when I'm when I feel like I'm talking to a bunch of people, I get a little nervous. So he's here as a moral support. Um, but yeah, I. Uh, I was super pleased to have uh, have them approach me to do this, and I thought it'd be a fun challenge for me to kind of get out of my little um, little hideaway here, or I'm still in my hideaway, but like to to talk to community, which is something that um, I really miss after the, especially after the past couple of years. But I just living, we live out in uh, out in the country now, so it's kind of I still go to town every day, but uh, I don't feel like I'm as connected to everybody. And I see some old friends that popped up on this, on this thing here, and I'm just happy to be talking to talking to you guys. Uh, so for the next two hours, I'll be uh, I'll be talking about <laughs> songs and songwriting. Uh, no, I'm gonna try and make it relatively quick. I could probably talk for a long time about it because it's you know it's. it's I think about it every day and uh, pursuing this kind of weird art form and um, is, you know, it's definitely all encompassing for me. So, um, but in, I'm just going to talk about one particular song. I thought I, I thought it would be interesting to kind of like, like trace the origin of a song and then originally I, I thought we had more time so I was like okay I'll talk about how the song started and then I'll walk people all the way through towards like the recording process and like how a song gets documented and and then the final product and all this stuff uh, but we are we don't have two hours to discuss all this but um, This particular song, um, I started. I, I I got to travel down to uh, to Alabama to open for Pete Yorn uh, a few years ago. Just kind of last minute, he invited me to come do one show. So I was like, well, I'm going to go all that way to play one show. I might as well like see if I can find a place to go hole up for a few days and like try and do some writing. So I found this super cheap. Uh, condo on the beach in uh, Gulf Shores and uh, booked it for like four days went and did the show with Pete and it was really really fun um, and then got back to the condo and started you know just kind of doing the uh, the thing that I do to get to the place where I feel like I'm going to write something good is it just requires me kind of uh, removing myself from my daily uh, routine obviously and the and the the desire to distract myself by like running out and weeding the garden or uh going to the store or mowing the lawn or whatever it is that i do to keep myself from from this thing uh so yeah so i went to this this place down there and uh i i kind of checked into the to the uh, condo and started started working and then i found out that Someone else I had opened for uh, not too long before that, uh, I got a chance to open up for Neil Casal, uh, and a, he has a band, had a band called Circles Around the Sun, and uh, I did about five or six shows with those guys, and and really connected with them. Uh, with him especially, I just felt like he was just a kindred spirit, and uh, I felt like I had met like a new friend, kind of, uh, even though we were just had brief encounters throughout the tour and then I would like drive off to the hotel or whatever. But, um, I just felt like, yeah, this is a guy that I'm going to, I'm going to know for a while. And we're going to, you know, I was, I had all these plans in my head to ask him to, you know, maybe play guitar on a record sometime or maybe produce or I don't know, just plans. So I found out that he had passed away at that, at that con, uh, while I was at the condo and, uh, and he had, uh, yeah, he had, decided to take his own life in a very uh planned out sort of way left a note uh really thoughtful note for his friends and people that he was leaving behind and and it really kind of hit me in this major way just like 
even though I barely knew the guy, it was, uh, it was really, uh, striking to me because we had a lot of similarities, like our ages were similar and our musical, the points in our musical career were kind of the same. And I just, I felt like, yeah, this was a guy that I was going to know for a long time and, and he decided to, to take off. So, um, so there I was like with my guitar in a, in a weird place and, uh, just kind of thinking about writing and getting in that place where my my thoughts kind of can flow uh freely and i you know i have these uh, techniques that i do where i like usually at night i'll like mess around on the guitar and like mess with open tunings and come up with little chord progressions and ideas and kind of like really cut loose at night uh maybe like do some free writing and stuff like that. But mostly I'm working on like uh, melodies and chord progressions. And uh, and then the following morning, what I normally do is start to edit ideas and I start to like really sit down and actually write. So if I have a spark of an idea, I can really like focus on it more in the morning with like a cup of coffee and, and some sunshine somewhere. Uh, but that night, I was sitting on the on the little deck overlooking the ocean in my eighty dollar eighty five dollar condo that I had found, and uh, the sun was going down. And I looked out and I saw a flare. Uh, what I thought was a flare go off on uh, kind of off to the side out in the water, and I was like, "Oh, that's pretty wild! Like, what do people do when they?" what are you supposed to do if you really see a flare? Like, are you supposed to call somebody? And like, is that, you know, like is somebody in trouble out there? And what am I, what am I supposed to do here? I don't know the, I'm not a, I don't live on the coast. I don't know the rules of that situation, but I knew that possibly I had seen uh, some sort of signal that somebody was in trouble, you know? Uh, and I called my wife, Joe T. And I was like, Hey, I think I just saw someone shoot a flare off. What do you think I should do? And she was not really sure. So I ended up calling the local, uh, I just called the local fire department, I think first, and they connected me to a couple other people. And I just described what I'd seen. And by this time, the sun was really kind of getting, uh, it was kind of set. And, you know, I don't think anybody around me had seen that people on the beach weren't paying attention. And um, so I, I just told him where I'd seen this thing and said, hopefully you guys can go check it out. Uh, maybe somebody's in trouble. And then, uh, you know, and then I went on about my routine of, uh, messing around on the guitar and just kind of occasionally looking out there to see if I saw like a helicopter or somebody like looking out at the water. Um, and then I went to bed and then the next morning I started thinking about that, uh, that whole thing and connecting it to my friend who had, who had just, uh, you know, passed and, uh, thinking about like the signs that people give, you know, for that, in that situation, like they might be giving signs that no one's seeing and, um, uh, and what do we do if we see those signs from people, you know, um, how do we handle that? Uh, so yeah, I um, started writing and just like, I've gotten into this thing lately where I, I used to uh, have notebooks that were like bound notebooks that I would write in and that always felt too uh, official or whatever. So I started buying uh, three ring binders and filling them with just tons of paper so I can write and write and write and write and write and then go back and find the good ideas and then write those down again and then keep keep doing that until I get like the essence of what I think is uh, an honest song and that's kind of like what I really go for is like uh, lyrics that feel honest and important to me enough to want to sing them over and over again uh, to people so so yeah I just started that process and and started thinking about all, all, you know seeing that warning sign from somebody and then seeing the people on the beach and uh, the sunset and then I thought about him as a as a musician and and 
being on stage and and you know looking out at, at the people that are there to see him and thinking about what what was going on in his in his life you know uh so yeah so i just kind of like pieced this song together um and i don't know what that you know you can link that to to kismet uh, it, i think it links up there somehow but um So I'll play the song now. I think I'd maybe talked enough. I don't know. <laughs> and it's a it's a new song. I, I just uh, just finished recording a, a new record, and it's one of the songs that will be on this new record. That's the song. Um, 
yeah, it came together uh, in a really kind of interesting way that doesn't always happen with uh, with that process. And I, I'm proud of the song and I'm, I'm uh, yeah, I think it, it's funny too, the, the longer I sit with something that I've written, especially when it is connected to something like that, uh, they even like give me meaning like after I've written them, like I'll, I'll read more things into the lines or if I'm singing them to people in the audience, uh, if I'm doing a show or something, uh, a lot of times the, uh, the words will take on new meanings as I'm singing them to, to folks. And uh, that's to me the importance of really working on your craft. If you're, if you're into music and you're into writing songs, uh, really like trying to get to the essence of something and, and making sure you're being like honest about your lyrics. So they, so they stay with you and it's not just something that's kind of, uh, you know, just tossed out there. Like it, for me, that's, that's what, that's what my songwriting is. It's just a, it's a way to like capture something in the most kind of pure way I can and, and then be able to share it with other people. So hopefully, uh, that came across to you guys.